high schoolers are clueless. And the only reason I can say that so confidently is because I am one of them. There's an interesting progression of education in the US that seems to hold pretty common. Everything's absolutely fine until you hit high school. That's when the heat really starts to pick up. Suddenly you're expected to be doing calculus, writing in Spanish, speaking perfect English, and somehow memorizing the events that led to the French Revolution, all while keeping up with your extracurriculars and your social life. Yeah, super easy. But then they introduce the big word, college. Now for me, I've always been interested in STEM and public speaking, whether it's synthesizing new compounds and looking at different kinds of plants, or if it's just doing dramatics at school. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that to combine my interests is a lot more difficult than I might have ever thought. So I started to look into multiple different careers because I realized that my first grade aspirations of becoming a ballerina slash biochemist slash president of the United States, not exactly the most achievable goals. So as I was looking into new careers, I realized that there were two main issues that I was consistently facing. One, every time I looked at a new STEM career, which by the way, I can confirm there are over a hundred thousand, I was immediately drawn to every single one. I did not know what to do. This was not helping me narrow down in the goal that I was trying to narrow down in which career choices that I could potentially pursue. But then the second one shocked me a little bit. I was constantly doubting my abilities, saying that I probably would never even be good enough to be in a field like that. And this one particularly scared me, so I decided that I wanted to go seek out some role models for women to get their advice on what exactly I should do, because I had no idea what I was doing. So I decided that I was also going to try to help the others around me that I'm sure were going through these very same issues. And I started my podcast, All About Her, where I interview various women in different STEM fields to understand their experiences and advice, and to try to implement that and figure out what exactly I wanted to do with my life. The strangest thing was, that all of these incredibly successful women who seemingly had their lives together told me that they felt the same exact feelings that I was feeling as a lost high schooler. This blew my mind. But these main ideas of doubting yourself and feeling like you don't belong in a group tie into something called imposter syndrome. I, I don't know if you've heard of this, but it, it seems to kind of take over without anyone really realizing it. Now, I have only one slide for you today, so that's how you know it's going to be important. This is the percent of the 15 women that I've interviewed so far that have felt imposter syndrome at some point in their life. So in case you don't have a calculator on you, that means approximately 14 out of every 15 women in STEM have faced imposter syndrome, despite the fact that they're all incredibly successful, especially in my eyes, which completely blew my mind. How do successful people still feel insecure about why they're in their career? As I continue to delve deeper and interview more and more women, I realized that it wasn't just the idea of imposter syndrome, but the underlying idea of gender inequality in STEM. Most of the fields in STEM are male dominated. I grew up hearing this phrase. In fact, less than a quarter of people in STEM are women. Even more shockingly, let's not even look at the statistics for women in leadership positions. So as I continued through this journey, realizing that it had more to do with gender inequality than I initially thought, I realized that it's surrounding me. It's surrounding so many different people. I'm incredibly privileged in the sense that I've been supported by the community around me, my friends, my family, and my teachers to persist through all the difficulties that imposter syndrome has thrown at me. But it still kind of creeps up on you. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't have that community to help them deal with it. It's kind of like 
being controlled by an invisible force. Like with gravity, you don't really realize it's there until either an apple falls on your head or you fall flat on your face and then it hits you like a ton of bricks. But seriously, it really is kind of shocking how it's ingrained itself into the minds of people in our society without anyone ever really noticing it. And it turned into this vicious cycle. The fact that most of the women I've spoken to have not seen any women mentors, have not seen any people they can look up to as women when they were growing up, just shows us how imposter syndrome eats away at them so much that they feel like they can't pursue their dreams. I remember back in grade school how no one really ever judged you. You know, you could do whatever you wanted, you, you wouldn't be judged. But as I've gotten older and older and there are more advanced STEM classes, I'm noticing fewer of my female peers joining these classes, all with the same excuse that I'm not good enough. Imposter syndrome just keeps on planting seeds of doubt in everyone's minds and it destroys our communities. So how can we stop this from getting any bigger? How can we fix this issue, even just with one individual? I've compiled a short list of advice from the women I've spoken to so far in hopes that we can all take a little bit of this information and try to implement it in our own lives. First, be bold and try new things. I know this can be a little bit hard because in a world where we all strive for perfection and we don't want to fail, we oftentimes just try to stay with the normal pack and not deviate. But the most successful people in our world today were not normal. They pushed themselves and they've done things that may be considered failures now, but at the end of the day ended up successful. We also need to remember that you aren't under any kind of time constraint if you're just in high school. I think that's a culture that we also oftentimes see you have your entire life ahead of you. I've spoken to women in their 50s who still don't know what they want to do. And the point is that you experiment and you fail, but you always get up again. Second, never doubt yourself. This one's incredibly hard, especially for me, I see it in every aspect of my life, not just in school or in STEM. But we oftentimes tend to think that we aren't good enough based on whatever it is in our society. Overcoming that is the first step to destroying imposter syndrome. Showing the world that you don't care and that you're going to do whatever you want to do is that first step. So don't ever doubt yourself. Revel in your successes and learn from your failures because that's what's going to make imposter syndrome go away for good. But finally, and I think most importantly, we need to build a community of support and positivity. These two ideas are generally seen together, but we don't see this community online or in person, especially now. We don't really get that opportunity to relate to other people. I hope that through this podcast, I can build a community where other women feel like they can go somewhere when they have these questions, that they're not completely alone, and that more than anything, they don't have to face it alone. Instead of having these events where women can showcase their work and talks like mine to spread awareness or even my podcast, I hope we get to a point where we don't need to have any of this, where it's all normal and women can just share their work without it being labeled as such. I hope that we can all learn, rather than looking at the women behind STEM, we look at the women leading STEM. Women like Emmanuel Charpentier, Jennifer Doudna, Donna Strickland, Frances Arnold, and many, many more. The list goes on and on for women we constantly forget to appreciate. I want to leave everyone with one last idea from a mathematician that I spoke to recently. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, but more than anything, affirm yourself and your ideas and tell yourself that you are awesome because if you don't, no one else will. And I think that's one of the most important ideas that we can all take away. So hopefully with all of this advice, us high schoolers won't be half as confused anymore. 
and we'll finally be able to break out of the rule of imposter syndrome and gender inequality. Thank you.